we want to find the exact trig function values using the unit circle. The great thing about the unit circle is that if we sketch the angle in a standard position, the point where the terminal side intersects the unit circle gives us both the cosine function value and the sine function value. The x-coordinate is equal to cosine theta and the y-coordinate is equal to sine theta. So to find the exact value of cosine five pi over six on the unit circle, we'll sketch five pi over six radians in standard position and then determine where the terminal side intersects the unit circle. So the initial side is along the positive x-axis and now we'll rotate counterclockwise five pi over six radians. If we would rotate from here to here, so here's the terminal side of five pi over six radians. Notice how the x-coordinate is equal to negative square root three divided by two, and the y-coordinate is equal to positive one-half. Because we're looking for the cosine function value, we want the x-coordinate, therefore cosine five pi over six is equal to negative square root three divided by two. Now this one was pretty straightforward because notice how five pi over six radians was labeled on the unit circle, but I also want to discuss a method for finding this point if this angle was not labeled on the unit circle. As long as we remember that half a rotation counterclockwise would be pi radians, we should still be able to find five pi over six radians on the unit circle if we divide pi radians into six equal parts because our angle is a multiple of pi over six radians. So if we start here and stop here, that would be pi radians. To divide this into six equal parts, we'll first cut it in half, that would be pi over two radians, and now we'll divide the first quadrant into three equal pieces, and then the second quadrant into three equal pieces. So in the first quadrant, we'll divide here and here. Now the first quadrant is divided into increments of pi over six radians, and now we'll do the same in the second quadrant, here and here. Now that it's divided into increments of pi over six radians, we can count by pi over six radians. So here's one pi over six radians, two pi over six radians, three pi over six radians, four pi over six radians, and then finally, five pi over six radians. So this would be another way to find the correct point on the unit circle to determine the trig function value. This will be much more helpful in the second example because we're not gonna find negative four pi over three radians labeled on the unit circle. So let's go ahead and try the second example. We want to find sine negative four pi divided by three. So here's the initial side of the angle. And now because the angle is negative, we're going to rotate four pi over three radians clockwise. So again, as long as we recognize that if we rotate clockwise half a rotation, This would be negative pi radians, but because our angle is a multiple of pi over three radians, we want to divide negative pi radians into three equal pieces. So we're starting here and stopping here, and now we'll divide this into three equal pieces. So we'll divide it here and here. So now we could count by negative pi over three radians, but because we have negative four pi over three radians, let's also do the same for the other half of the unit circle. So we would divide it here and here. Now that the unit circle is divided into increments of pi over three radians, we can easily count by negative pi over three radians to determine the terminal side of this angle. This would be negative one pi over three radians, negative two pi over three radians, negative three pi over three radians, and then finally negative four pi over three radians. So this will be the terminal side of our angle Notice how it's also coterminal with two pi over three radians. And here's the point where the terminal side intersects a unit circle. The x coordinate is negative one half. The y coordinate is square root three divided by two. Because we're looking for the sine function value, this is equal to positive square root three divided by two. So when first learning how to do this, I realize it can be challenging to find the terminal side of the angle, especially when the angle is not labeled. 
on the unit circle. So we will take a look at some more examples in the next video. I hope this was helpful.